How good is it to be outside again? After a winter of snow, it's time to start the golf season. We're in St. Simons Island, Georgia, for the Sea Palms Resort. How nice is this place? We're gonna head over to the Frederica Golf Club. We're gonna dive in, dial in our game over this series, and talk about how to get yourself set up for a great season. This is the first session of the off-season project, and it's time to get started, right? Uh, there's a lot of unknowns, I'll be honest, a little bit of nerves because you haven't hit a shot, and I kind of want to talk through a process of how to get started with some best practices. We are here at Frederica Golf Club, the Learning Center. We got Jackson Court. Let's dive into it. All right, man. So the question is, you know, we're starting a new year. There's so many things that I don't know. Like, don't know what my ball flight's gonna look like, don't know if I feel if my body's gonna hurt, right? So like, I wanna talk about just like the very basics of where should we start, right? Right, so the basics, old school, you've heard GPS before, grip, posture, setup. So I think a lot of that is what we would start with initially. Um, and the benefit of having consistency with a golf instructor is I know some of your tendencies with your grip and your setup already, yep. right? So some things I'm gonna look to see, is he doing correctly or is he going back towards his bad habits? I, and I think like that's what I, I wanna communicate over and over again to everyone in Golf Science Lab is like, always come back to these basics, right? Correct. Not only at the beginning of the season here when we're getting started, but like a month into the season. Yeah. Like all the time, this should be a check because how many times during a lesson do you, do you end up saying like, hey, it's, it's grip, posture, stance, alignment, one of those things. Often, because a lot of times you see those fundamentals with your setup or your grip, your alignment, ball position, stuff like that. If you have tendencies there, it will influence your swing over time. Yeah. So I think laying a foundation and getting set up correctly will help you not only in the short term getting back, but also developing good habits over, over a period of time. Perfect, so just hit a few shots, yeah. see where we're at. So talk to me about your grip, what you do, and why you do it. Can I be honest that yeah. I have like very little to no awareness of my grip? Okay. Is that, that's probably more common than people would think. Yes. And I, I like, Way I honestly have no idea what my grip is or okay. like what it's like when I play my best. Okay. So a strong grip with your lead hand for a right-handed golfer like yourself is your left hand is when you would see more knuckles starting to appear on the top of the grip or that line that you create between your thumb and pointer finger starting to get towards your right shoulder, your trail shoulder. I think your left hand grip orientation wise is pretty good. So I feel like I remember growing up, um, people always said I had a strong grip. Okay. I will say for your, for your lead hand and what I've seen before, I remember we actually talked about this, but you tend to get the grip a little bit more up in the palm of the left hand. So when I look, from this down the line view. So I can see like a little bit of space between his pinky and that grip there. So what you're saying is get it, try to get a little a more in little the fingers? A little more in the fingers, yes. So I like to see the pad on top of that club because that's what creates some of the hinge. Okay. Right, and I think when, that, when the grip starts to get up high, you don't have anything on top of that grip for it to push down on. So I would have it a little bit more in the fingers of your lead hand so that that pad gets directly on top of the club. And now you can do that even with a weak grip, with a very weak lead hand, right, where I wouldn't see a knuckle and that line is pointing more towards my left shoulder, I still have that pad on top of the club there and there's no space between my pinky and that grip. So let's hit one with it a little more down in the fingers of that lead hand. Yeah. Down the fingers. Awesome. It feels good. I mean, I definitely feel that hinge thing you're talking about. Okay. So the only thing that makes contact with the golf ball is the club face. Having control over that is a big deal. Yeah. And that's why I think maybe under understanding your grip Right, and what it's like when you play good or what it's like when you're controlling your golf ball best yep. 
is something good for you to be aware of, especially starting in the new season. Yep. So folks that aren't with an instructor, they're just at home, you know, they're coming out for the first time. Any kind of checks that you like to see people do, or is it really like you just got to know yourself and you got to know your game? A little bit um, about knowing yourself and understanding your game, but I would say I tend to see or tend to like yeah. when people's lead hands for a right-handed golfer again, your left hand, kind of set up on the club just as your arm would hang down here. So my arms tend to hang down a little bit more open than most, right? So I've got a, a buddy, big, strong upper body, so his, his arms kind of hang inward, right? So when he gets grabs onto the club with his left hand, you see a bunch of knuckles. I wouldn't change that for him, but I'm the other way, right? My, my hand sits like that, so when I set up, I tend to have a little bit more of a weak left hand. So that's kind of the first check I would do with your left hand. And then I just like to see, you know, the grip kind of being covered with your right. I'm actually very picky with some of the grip okay. things, but I think if I had to generalize it, I would say that for your lead hand and then kind of get your right hand on there so that you're covering the grip and you've got that thumb in between the pads of that right hand. All right, so we've got our grip in place. Um, what's the next check you wanna do? What ball shape do you like to hit? Shot shape. I like to hit a cut. You like to hit a cut? I like to hit a cut. So where do you like to have your feet, hips, and shoulders aimed? I know I struggle with them being too open. Okay. So that's kind of a thing that I need to check. I know like what feels comfortable to me is sometimes like this. I'm, I hit okay. it pretty straight, right? Yep. Like I'm not trying to play a cut. I'm just okay. trying to hit it straight. It might fall to the right. Okay. Um, so I mean, just doing that, I, I know that my, my hips have a tendency to mm -hmm. go like that. So trying to get those squared up feels a That's little That's good unnatural. right there. See, I feel like I'm way shut right now. So what's an easy way for you to check how your shoulders, hips, feet are relative to each other? Right there in a mirror, yeah. And you can do that at home, right? Yeah. Don't even have to do that at a golf course. So you're gonna look in this mirror to make sure that you can see a little bit of this lead arm on top of your right when you're looking down the, down the line. Okay. Yeah, good. And really all you're looking for is that your shoulders, right? Your hips and your feet line are relatively similar or matching up. Gotcha. And so what's an easy way for you to practice that at the range? Um, probably get something on the ground to, to look at. Exactly. Good swing there. So what we like to see in a stock setup. Okay. If you've got, you have a seven iron there? I've got a seven iron. So stock setup with a seven iron would be a couple degrees of axis tilt where your spine gets slightly tilted away from the target or like the buttons on your shirt get behind your belt buckle there at setup. And obviously with your driver, it's up on a tee, we're gonna try and launch it up into the air. You're gonna have the most axis tilt or spine tilt there. Seven iron, your mid irons are gonna be rather close to neutral, a couple degrees, and then your wedges are gonna be a little bit more vertical or neutral. So you think I can maybe use a little bit more? Yes. Tilt? Yep. All right, so we're gonna do that. Good, there you go, awesome. Doing this stuff when you first get back from your off season, I would take your time. I would do your grip and focus on your grip for 20, 30 minutes, right? I would go through your whole bag just on that one thing. Okay. And then work on your setup and go through your whole bag with that. Okay. And kind of take your time and ease back into it. Another good strike. Where would you tend to be with your stance width? Like, big scope picture of where you typically are with stance width and club face. I think with stance width, I'm always kind of like trying to find the sweet spot. 
feel like I go from too thin to too wide. Like that's a season. Really? It's kind of we're trying to find it. Okay. Um, club face, typically open is where I'm going to go. Typically open. I'm okay. going to go because I'm afraid to hit it left. So everything I do is kind of interesting. So club face tends to be open. Yep. I set up and you like it there. No, I think it, I play okay. my best when, when I can square okay. it up. Grab your handy dandy sticks. What's your target here? Um, I'm going uh, just the right edge of that green, the last ball there. Okay. It's a little bit right of the red flag. So I'm going to set this one down kind of for your target line, correct? Okay. Yep. You can, do a, you can do a number of things here. You can put another one down for your feet and body lines, right? Now, you can also put one down there for your ball position. Okay, some people, I'm gonna steal this from yep. you, some people like seeing their club face relative to this line, the target line. Some people like seeing that club face relative to the ball position stick. Doesn't matter to me, whichever one you prefer. But I think um, getting that, first of all, consistent would be good and understanding where it is when you are hitting your desired shot shape. Now, I would prefer square. That's kind of my baseline preference. I would agree. But, but if you like it a little open, I'm okay with that. A little close scares me a fraction, but I'm okay with well, that. Well, I think too. I get in trouble when my, my club gets open. Okay. So I gotta, I gotta keep checking that thing's gonna be yeah, square. So for you, is it easier for you to see it square relative to this stick or to this ball position stick? Which one do you visually like looking at better for that club face? Um, this one. That's okay. The ball position. What did you call this? this That's line? your target line. Target line. Yep. Okay. So close. And again, coming from the off season, I would do all of these things over a long period of time, right? Like not. not <laughs> He's asterisking what we're doing here. Yes. Is not recommended. Now, I mean, this is all good stuff. Take right? your time. It's all great. But I would say we, we would do this in a much slower pace. Get used to one thing, kind of feel it throughout the whole bag. Yep. Right? Okay, how's that grip feel with the wedges, the mid irons, the driver, long clubs? Okay, how does that face getting square there set up feel with the same sequence of clubs? How does that tilt feel? Right? Yep. We're starting to see some better shots as well. Starting to strike it. Contact's improved, ball flight's a little more consistent. Now on the course, what's gonna be the best way or a way that all the best players in the world use to keep that club face square in their routine? Going like this and, and part of the setup? For sure, part of your like setup. That. And then what are, they, what are they lining up to initially? Uh, yeah, an intermediate front. target, yeah. right? So another way you can practice this, this is kind of one of my favorites actually, getting rid of those sticks, okay? okay? And then being picky about your target. So we're going at that third ball to the right of that flag and putting this about a foot, two feet out in front, wherever your preference is, but line that up with your target. How's that? It's good? That looks perfect. So that's the intermediate target. It's kind of got to spear that is how I think about it. Perfect. Hey, we're starting to swing this golf club, Jackson. <laughs> we're starting it's to good. swing it. It's very good. I'm getting excited. Can we go play yet? Yes. We got a few more things. This is gonna be a really fun project. We're gonna go all over. We're gonna do wedges, putting. Um, we're gonna look at the golf swing a little bit. We're gonna go on the course. Uh, I hear we have a match in store. So um, definitely stay tuned for this entire off-season project. Good swing. Jackson, so I'll be honest, this last one to look at um, causes me some anxiety because I never know if what I'm doing is matched up to my golf swing. So some days I feel like, okay. you know what I need to do is I need to really stand up. That's gonna help me 
you know, I'm going to stand up real tall. That's going to help my golf swing. And then other days I'm like, what? I, I need to really like, you know, Tiger is so bent over when you watch him swing. I really got to, you know, get down here. And so I never okay. have comfort with my posture. You sound like me. Perfect. Because <laughs> like I'll give lessons and think, oh man, that's good. I should use some of this in my swing and tinker all the time. Yep. Okay. I've told you I've been stuck on that word repeatability. Yep. And I think repeatability comes from consistency, right? Or you could, you know, correlate those two. Well, you hear from tour pros saying they started making big gains when they started doing what worked for them. Correct. And ignoring, like looking at everything uh, That's else, exactly right? right. And that's what we have to do as Correct. well. Correct. Very, very difficult. <laughs> right. So I think understanding a couple of, uh, if we're going to start with posture, I think understanding kind of three things that you have commonly heard for the, the relationship of your spine at setup. So you've okay. heard of S curve. Yep. C curve and kind of that flat back. So demonstrate so got, for us what S curve would S be. S curve would be like this. Yes, right? correct. Where you can your spine curves a little bit in the shape of an S. Yep. Okay. Now show us C curve. C right. Curve so it's like. it's like old. Show us super bad posture, like old man. Right. Like yeah. very rounded in there. That would be C curve. And then flat back is obviously where your core is a little bit more engaged, and you have a straight or flat back there. The number one, no, undoubt, undoubtedly the worst one. Is S curve because it, it limits your ro your rotation Correct. ability, right? Yeah. So when you go into S curve, it constricts a lot of your the way your lower back. Yeah, there, yeah. Well, the way your spine would rotate or your segments would turn in backswing. So number one, we're looking to not have S curve. Right? Okay. I'm okay with a little bit of C, and I'm also okay with that flat back. Okay. So here's what, I'm going to try to do this without thinking. Ready? Okay. No thought to this. <laughs> That's good. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Hey, that's what we like to hear. And I think you're right about posture being very different based on the player, right? Yeah. So I have very long arms okay. relative to my body. I have long legs, I have a short torso, and I've got long arms. Yeah. My setup looks a little bit different, right? Yeah. I think you're pretty stock. Okay. Like you're just not very symmetrical, right? So I would say for you, I would look to have your arms kind of hanging straight down under your shoulders and your armpits are kind of your shoulders starting to get out over like the balls of your feet a little bit. So that's good there. Yeah, exactly. Same thing here for posture. Doing it in a mirror at home would be awesome. Okay. So, I mean, I feel athletic. I, I, I think like nothing that we've done today has made me feel tight okay. or feels awkward. Restricted. Restricted. It's all very athletic. I feel like I'm like ready to go more than ever, Good. right? And I think that's the biggest key is like, the goal with golf is it's an athletic movement and we want everyone to be athletic when doing it, right? Correct. And like that's, I feel ready to go 100% um, after going through this and uh, yeah I'm excited the reason why I like talking about all this baseline stuff is we're you know you've got your grip some alignment club face all this good stuff posture yep. right all this good stuff how much about the actual golf swing are you thinking about right now none none love that I haven't I haven't thought about it at all and there's enough here where if I was, you know, if we were going to go play tomorrow, I don't need to think about any of that. I just need to go That's get correct. in a good and be more target fo focused, honestly. And so your challenge in the short term, another good ball. That was a good challenge one. in the short term would be to get into this setup mm -hmm. every time out on the golf course through your routine, yep. right? Making it like clockwork. Yeah. That's kind of your short term challenge, and then letting that self that setup give you feedback as to what the ball's doing and, and how you feel or what your swing is like. Yep. Do you agree? hundred percent. This is awesome, Jackson. Thank you for your help. Next time on the off season project, we are going to look at the golf swing. Uh, just getting started. You want to make sure you're on track. You know, my swing, everyone needs to find a coach that they work with that, that knows how they, how they swing, what works for them, what doesn't. So we're going to look at that so much more to come. Make sure to stay tuned. Jackson, till next time.